Okay, so to conclude, we'll talk some, briefly about some class details and how, how this course is going to work for the next three weeks. Um, this is standard beginning of class information. Um, the main goal for this class, the whole, the thing I want you to come away with this class or from this class with is the ability to recognize and create beautiful and truthful visualizations with real world data. That's kind of the, the big goal. Um, if you can do that um, by the end of this class, then you will have succeeded. Um, if you can't create everything perfectly, if you're not going to be able to remember every single piece of ggplot code to create the graphics, that's fine. You'll have a reference um, of all of the different code that we'll be going through in this class. The website um, for this course will stay up in perpetuity as long as I'm here at GSU. And if I move to other, any other um, institution, I am planning on keeping it. Um, you can actually, if you go to my, my personal website and then click on the teaching um, tab on my personal website, you can see all of the class websites for all of the classes I've taught at universities. Um, so at, I was at Brigham Young University for two years before I came here. All my BYU classes are there. All my past GSU classes are there. All my future GSU classes will be there. And so um, you'll have all sorts of references for doing this stuff in the future. So even though it is a super packed semester in three weeks, um, you'll still be able to learn a lot and reference the stuff that you haven't learned. Um, the, the, the course is organized following this flowchart here, which is on the course website. Um, we'll spend the first um, three days, which would be three weeks in regular time, talking about the foundations of um, data visualization. And so this connection between truth and beauty, which we talked about today, um, tomorrow, we'll talk about graphic design principles, um, which are general principles for any type of design, not just data visualizations. And then we'll talk about how to connect these, how to map things that are in a data set onto graphics and how to make them look good. And there's actually a whole language for describing that mapping. It's called the grammar of graphics. And you'll get introduced to that and it'll let you describe any sort of graph using specific terminology that is kind of more universally understood in the data visualization world. And so that's important. Um, then we'll move into this central part here where we'll talk about how to visualize specific types of information, um, how to visualize amounts and proportions, how to show uncertainty and estimates, um, how to show relationships between things, how to compare things. Um, so this is kind of these general principles for graphic design um, or data visualization design. And then this last section is exciting because we'll do special applications of those core types of graphics. And so you'll learn how to make interactive dashboards and interactive plots, and you'll learn how to um, animate stuff um, and create your own fancy animations. Um, you'll learn how to make maps. Um, that's the space part. That's not like NASA space. That's like geography space. Um, you'll learn how to analyze text um, and do all sorts of cool text visualizations. And then enhancing graphics, this is, you'll learn how to export plots from R and put them in Illustrator or any other graphic editing program and make them extra fancy, um, which is kind of the industry standard. If you look at most um, newspapers, so the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times and the BBC and CNN and most major news organizations, um, the way they make their charts is the majority of them make their graphs in R. And then they export the graphs from R and put them into, in, into Illustrator if they're a print organization, like the New York Times or Washington Post, or if they're online. Um, so Vox and 538, they create things in R and then they fancy it up in Illustrator and stick it on their website. If you're like the BBC or CNN, you export your stuff from R and then you stick it into a program called After Effects, and then that's where you can enhance it. Um, when you or for the next or on session three, so on Wednesday, you'll watch a short video from a scholar named Hans Rosling, where he shows an animated view of the progression of health and wealth over time through 180 different countries. Um, that was um, a plot that was exported probably from R or something similar, and then stuck into After Effects, and then that's where they animated all of the points and made it all fancy. And so this, the stuff that you're doing here is industry standard um, material. This is not just like how to make fancy graphs in Excel. This is like how to make real world stuff that gets published in real publications on a daily basis. Um, understanding how to do this R stuff is a very marketable, powerful skill. And so 
hopefully, again, you probably understand that because you're taking this class. Um, but again, the, the skills you're learning here are like super important and widely used. So pay attention. Um, the technology we're using in this class is R. So if you look at this chart here, it's up in this corner. Um, the reason we're using it is it is a little bit tricky to use initially. There will be a learning curve for the first week or so. Um, you will eventually settle into a groove and you'll understand what's going on. Um, but be prepared for some friction at the beginning. Um, if you look at this chart here, it's a fake visualization. Like, there are no numbers here, but it's still truthful. Um, so the x-axis here is the barrier to entry. It's, it's how much code you have to write to be able to create stuff in, in that program. So in Excel or Google Docs, you don't have to write any code. You just uh, type numbers in and then click on a button and it spits out a chart. Um, but um, modifying that chart and making it fancy and adding extra dimensions of data is really hard. If you want to color all of the points by a specific continent, for example, good luck doing that in Excel. There's probably a way, if you Google it, there's going to be like a one-hour YouTube video about how to do it. Um, don't do that. Use a program that is made for that. Um, in the middle here, you have programs like Stata and Tableau. Um, they have a slightly higher barrier to entry. They're a little bit more complicated to use than Excel, um, but they're a little bit more powerful. You can do really cool things with Tableau. You can make really cool dashboards. You can publish them. Um, you can make all sorts of interactive visualizations with Tableau. Um, Tableau is neat. The only reason I don't cover it in this class is because it's not free. It is free for students, um, but as soon as you are done being a student, then you don't have access to it anymore. And so um, I don't want to teach you stuff that you'll never use again. Um, so instead, we look at R here, which has a higher barrier to, barrier to entry, but the stuff that you can make with it You'll be amazed um, once we get to like the animation stuff. You can do like 3D animated maps, and you can have like a camera fly into a map that is spinning. Um, you can create the Hans Rosling health and wealth plot with the dots moving up and down over time. You can do all sorts of really cool stuff. You can make complicated maps. You can do cool text visualizations, um, moving way beyond like word clouds, um, which is a typical way of looking at text. Um, you can do really cool and exciting things. Um, the last program I have up here is something called D3. It's a programming language based on or that uses JavaScript. Um, it does lots of interactive web-based visualizations, and there are D3 programmers that are like really well paid because it's a super complicated language. It's hard to use. Um, I've made a couple things in it, and it took me like three days to make a thing that I could drag. Um, and it changes the color as you drag it. And that was a waste of three days. Um, and so like, you can make super fancy stuff with D3, but you have to be a super expert at it. And so we're not going to cover that. Um, we're going to live in this world of R, because that's where um, you'll get the most bang for your buck. So um, the main class technology we're using, again, is R. We're going to be using it inside something called RStudio. So again, in the I think it was in the syllabus page, I explained that R itself is kind of like the engine. It's the thing that does all of the calculations. It's the thing that spits out graphs. Um, it runs models. It does all of the mathy stuff. Um, R Studio is a program that sits on top of R and lets you see the plots that get spat out. It lets you edit the text and edit the scripts and then run them. So it's a, it's a convenient place to run your R code inside R Studio. And so that's what we'll be using in this class. Um, the main R package that we're going to be using is something called ggplot. Um, GG stands for Grammar of Graphics. And in session three, um, so on Wednesday, we'll talk about what the actual grammar of graphics means and how that's related to this ggplot idea. Um, so another, I, I just used this term called package. So R is powerful because anybody can write a function for R and then push that function up online and other people can download it and use it. So a function is just something that does something to input. Um, you're familiar with functions if you've ever used Excel and you've said, I want the sum of a certain column or the sum of multiple columns. And so in Excel, you say equals sum and then you select the column and it gives you the number. So that sum is a function. You, it's something that does something to input. You put input into it and it spits out a number. 
um, functions work the same in R. It, you, there's a function called ggplot where you you feed specific things into it, like the name of a data set and columns that you want to plot, and then it spits out a plot. And ggplot itself is not part of R by its like base R. Like if you download R from the internet, you cannot run ggplot um, because that doesn't exist yet. Um, you have to install a package which contains all of the fancy ggplot functions and lets you do those fancy plots. Excel doesn't have anything like this. Excel just has like a billion functions built into it. But if you imagine that somebody made a function called like my super mean that showed like a super version of an average, whatever that would look like in real life, then you could download that that person's fancy version of the average function and then use that. But it's not built into Excel. It's just a separate thing that you would put in. And that's how our packages work too. It's something that somebody else has written that you can then use. And so ggplot was written by a, a New Zealand statistician, a New Zealander statistician named Hadley Wickham. Um, he wrote lots of other R packages that we'll be using in this class. Um, he currently works for R Studio. Um, and ggplot is great. Um, you'll get super familiar with it throughout the semester here. Um, the reason it's so great is because it uses this idea of the grammar of graphics, where you're layering all of these different elements of a graph onto data and then showing um, the underlying patterns in the data. And so once we get to session three, we'll talk about this, this stack of squares here and you'll understand what that means. Um, so the tidyverse is something that we'll be using throughout the semester. All the tidyverse is, is it's a collection of packages that all work together nicely on tidy data. And we'll talk about what tidy data means tomorrow with the, with the with session, no, not tomorrow, session three when we talk about ggplot, we'll also talk about tidy data. Um, so these little icons here are just the logos of packages. Package developers in the R world really like to create like fancy hex sticker logos for their packages. Um, if you look at the back of people's laptops, you'll see um, often they'll have a whole bunch of stickers on them that represent their favorite packages. Um, it's a super nerdy thing to do. I actually have it on my work laptop. We can show it off. Look at those pretty stickers. Um, if we met in person, I actually have a data viz sticker that I made for this class. It's that same hex logo that's on the course website. Um, if we ever meet in person again and you see me, um, I will give you a sticker for participating in this class. Um, but sadly, you're all somewhere out in the world and I can't see you because of this virus. So imagine that you have a really cool data visualization sticker. Um, so yeah, we're going to be learning how to use ggplot. We're going to be learning how to use dplyr and tidyr. We're not going to cover some of these other packages like per. We're not going to touch that. Um, it's a fun package. It lets you do something called functional programming. You don't need to worry about that. It does have a cool sticker, though, with the cat. OK, before we finish for today, one thing that's important to know is that the next week or so, as you're learning how to use R and um, learning how to actually type stuff into a computer and get figures out of it, it will be hard. And it will be like you'll feel like a failure at times. Um, this quote here, Hadley Wickham, again, he's the author of ggplot. He's the guy from New Zealand who invented all this stuff. Um, he gave an interview to some publication and he said this, that there's no way to know about, to know nothing about a subject um, from moving. Yeah, I'll just actually read it. There's no way of knowing nothing about a subject to knowing something about a subject without going through a period of much frustration and suckiness first. Um, so the only way to move from total ignorance to knowing about something is a period of suckiness. Um, the only way to get through it is to push through, and you will suck less by the time you get through it. Um, it will be hard, but I am here to help you. Again, I am on Slack. You can chat to me on Slack, and I will assist. Um, you can email me. If we were in person, you could come by my office, but I'm not there. Um, and so... Again, I will support you as much as possible. You will get through this. Um, it will just be hard for a couple days initially once you get, but once you get past the learning curve, you will understand what's going on and it won't feel so awful. Um, that does not mean that after a week you're going to be an expert. 
Um, it does not mean you will never type an error. You will type errors all the time. I've been doing R since 2011, so nine years now, and I still get all sorts of errors all the time, um, often for dumb mistakes. Computers are very literal and not very smart. And so often, like if you're typing something like in ggplot and you have to say x equals something, you have to type a comma after that before you say y equals something. And if you accidentally miss the comma or you put a period or a semicolon or something instead of a comma, your code will break. And sometimes it will take you all day to find that there's just a comma that's missing. Um, the error messages that you get from R try to help you find dumb little errors like that, but sometimes you, you don't. Um, and so just be prepared for that. Computers are just dumb. And that's just life. And it happens to all of us where we just get weird errors. And often it helps to get fresh eyes on, on the problem spots. It helps to sleep on it and wake up and try again. Um, that's just the nature of doing anything with computers. That's not an R issue. That's just a computer issue. Um, so finally, a couple final notes on sucking here. Um, again, sucking at something is the first step, first step toward becoming kind of good at something. Um, hopefully by the time you're done with this class, you'll be kind of good at using R and you'll be able to make cool things and show off your skills to your neighbors at a socially acceptable distance. Um, there's even research on this. Um, so there's this, this fun opinion piece, um, from a couple of years ago in the New York Times that says it's great to suck at something um, because it actually pushes us to become better at something and it expands our horizons, expands our possibilities and makes us grow. The only way to grow and to learn is to stink at it. Um, but again, I am here to fully support you through the period of stinkiness and suckiness and you will make it and you will learn, I promise.